A Fishy Business by Sue Graves. Chapter 5 The Night Watch. A night watch? said Mum. Oh, Mum, please say we can go, said Jack. Yes, please do. Said Mary, we will stay with Uncle Ted all the time. Mum looked worried. She did not like the idea of Jack and Mary going back to the pump house late at night. It might be dangerous, she said. I don't think you should go. And if you are late to bed, you will be tired for school tomorrow. But it was horrible to see all the dead fish, said Mary. We'd like to try and find out what's happening at the old pump house. Then perhaps we can stop more fish from dying. And we promise that we will work hard at school tomorrow, even if we are a little tired, said Jack. Mum sat down and had a think. She knew Mary and Jack were sensible. She also knew that they were good children. They would obey Uncle Ted and they would not do anything silly. And she did not like to think of the fish dying. Do you think it is a good idea? she asked Uncle Ted. I think we need to find out what is happening at the old pump house, said Uncle Ted. If we watch the place at night, we might find out. All right, sighed Mum. You can go, but you must promise to obey Uncle Ted and not do anything silly. Oh, thank you, Mum. We promise, said Mary. She gave her mother a hug. Thank you, Mum. We promise, said Jack. Uncle Ted looked at his watch. It was eight o'clock. Let's have a hot meal and then get ready to go, he said. We will be back at the pump house by ten o'clock. It will be really dark by then. As soon as the meal was finished, Uncle Ted and the children got ready. They put on warm, dark clothes. Nobody will see us in our dark clothes, said Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted drove Jack and Mary to the gate at the top of the field that led to the stream. We will park the car close to the trees, he said. We don't want anyone to see us. They walked along the bank of the stream towards the old pump house. The moon was shining, but it was still difficult to see where they were walking. Let's hide close to the pump house, said Uncle Ted. Then we'll be able to see and hear what's going on. Mary noticed some small bushes. That's a perfect place to hide, she said. All three of them settled down to wait. They heard the workers working in the factory. They saw vans arriving and leaving. They saw boxes being loaded and unloaded. They work very late, whispered Jack. They are working a night shift, explained Uncle Ted. I expect they will go home soon. At eleven o'clock, the night shift workers went home. Uncle Ted and the children heard Sid Scrub and his brother. Locking all the doors and bolting all the bolts in the factory. Then there was silence. It got later and later. Mary began to shiver with the cold. Jack yawned. He was beginning to feel sleepy. Uncle Ted looked at his watch. It was nearly midnight. I don't think anything is going to happen now, he said. We must be wrong about the factory. Nothing odd has happened at all. Jack rubbed his eyes. Please, can we stay for a few more minutes? He said. I'm sure something will happen soon. We'll stay for five more minutes, said Uncle Ted, and then we must go home. Jack hoped something would happen very soon. He felt sure he was right about the old pump house. After a few minutes, Uncle Ted looked at his watch again. 
time to go home, he said. But just then, a strange sound came from the pump house. It sounded as if something was being dragged across a floor. They moved closer to get a better look. What's that? whispered Mary. Shh, said Jack. Look. A hatch was opening up underneath the pump house. Wow, said Jack. Next. They heard the sound of some liquid being swirled round and round in a barrel. Then the liquid was tipped into the stream below. It landed with a small splash. Make sure the barrel is nice and clean, Harry, said a voice. I've got a fresh lot of dye to put in that barrel tomorrow. Wash it out well. I am making sure it is nice and clean, said Harry. He sighed crossly. <sighs> If you don't think I clean the barrels properly, you can clean them yourself. You are feeling cross tonight, aren't you? Teased Sid. Harry didn't answer. The two brothers worked on in silence for a few minutes. The only sound that could be heard was the sound of water swilling around in the bottom of the barrel. Then Sid began to laugh. What are you laughing about? Asked Harry. <laughs> I've just thought of something really funny, said Sid. This will cheer you up and make you laugh. Go on then, tell me, said Harry impatiently. <laughs> It's this, said Sid, still laughing. Any rainbow trout in the stream will really be rainbow coloured now. With all this waste dye, we're tipping into the water. <laughs> that's a funny joke, Sid," said Harry, laughing. "Yes, Sid, that's a really funny joke." Then the hat shut again. Uncle Ted and the children sat in silence. "Well, well, well," said Uncle Ted. "You two were right. Something bad is happening here." The brothers are polluting the stream. They are cleaning out the dye from the barrels and tipping the waste into the stream. That is what is polluting the water and killing the fish. Yes, said Jack. But there is something else too. The workers have all gone home for the night. They don't know what Sid and Harry are doing. We must do something about this, said Uncle Ted. But what can we do? Said Jack. Mary thought for a few minutes. I know, she said. We'll hold a meeting in the village hall. We'll ask all the workers to come. Then we can tell them what we found out. <laughs>